Good morning, and welcome to Easter Lutheran Church. Would you please stand and sing with us?
Happy New Year. Um, I just wanted to bring forward Psalm 150 today. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Holy God, as we reflect on this past year, may we be able to clearly see your presence in both the good times and the hard times. As we start a new year with endless possibilities, may we find new ways to praise you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Please continue to sing with us. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Gloria, in excelsis. Christmas Church. I'm Pastor Kevin. Welcome to worship here at Easter. Welcome to those worshiping with us online. I'm so glad that you're here today. Thank you, messengers, for reminding us we're still in the Christmas season. It's not that far away, and it's still a part of our lives, and we're so glad to hear Pastor Eric will be preaching for us today, and we're so glad as well to remember that on this last day of the year, we're going to pray in the new year together. How does that sound? What a gift that is to be together to do that, so thanks be to God for that. With that, I invite all the children to come forward for some good news time with Pastor Eric. If you still act like a child, if you still are a child, please come forward. Love to have you. Good morning. I see some friends coming over. Come on up. We'll have a seat over here. How are you? Good. Do you have a good Christmas? Is that a real candy cane? I'm kidding. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Well, Pastor Kevin just said Merry Christmas. I wanted to say Merry Christmas to all of you. You know it's still Christmas? Did you know that? Even though we already had some celebrations, and we opened all our presents. Probably we opened all of them. Yeah, but it's still Christmas. Christmas goes for 12 days, and it'll be, it will be Christmas almost all the way up till next Sunday. 
So you can still tell other people Merry Christmas when you see them. Will you do that? Yeah, you might surprise them, but you know what? I was thinking about, uh, you know that there's a, even though we all know what Christmas is, by the way, what, what is, why do we celebrate Christmas? That's right, Jesus' birthday. But did you know there's a lot of people and a lot of kids that you might be seeing when you get back to school who they don't, they don't even know what Christmas actually, why we celebrate. They think it's just a kind of a party in the, in the winter. So that's something that we get to tell people that it's Jesus' birthday and Jesus was God's son and he was born as a human just like us. That is really good news, isn't it? That's incredible that God became one of us. And um, Jesus, that's the good news that we celebrate at Christmas. It's still Christmas, and we can tell people that all year long. That is really good news. That Jesus was born, and Jesus lived to show and tell all people about God's great love for us, and that God promises to love and forgive you always. Isn't that good news? Will you pray with me? All right, and repeat after me. Dear God, Christmas is so fun. Thank you for Jesus. Thanks for loving us. Thanks for forgiving us. Help us to tell others the good news. Amen. Merry Christmas. Thanks for coming up. Christmas is good news because there's a word of forgiveness for us. And so guided by the light of love, we are ready to receive Christ into our hearts. We come to our God ready to be renewed and born again in confession and forgiveness. O oh God, you search us out and you know us. All that we have done and left undone is known to you. Forgive us in your mercy, God. We make no, when we make no room for Christ and fail to welcome him into our lives... Forgive us in your mercy, God. When we seek to cut down the lowly, forgive us in your mercy, God. When Christ's humble birth fails to turn us to the poor and displaced, forgive us in your mercy, God. When we sing about Christ's birth but fail to rejoice over his everyday presence, forgive us in your mercy, God. We turn to you, O Christ, fully God and fully human, and we declare we reject evil we claim your love. We walk in your light. Hear this good news. Jesus has come into the world to forgive sins. My sins, your sins, our sins. Show us God's love and bring us new life. And so in his name, in Jesus' name, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Our gospel for today is from the gospel of St. Mark, the first chapter. I'd like to invite you to stand this morning for the reading of the gospel. Stand as you are able. <clears throat> the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Here ends the gospel. Please be seated. Dear friends, in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Back when the telegraph was the fastest method of communication, 
uh, long distance communication, a young man applied for a job as a Morse code operator. When he arrived, he entered a large, busy office filled with noise and clatter, including the sound of the telegraph in the background. A sign on the receptionist counter instructed job applicants to fill out a form and wait until they were summoned to enter the inner office. The young man filled out his form and sat down with the seven other applicants in the waiting area. After a few minutes, the young man suddenly stood up, crossed the room to the door of the inner office, and just walked right in. Naturally, the other applicants perked up and wondered what was going on. They muttered among themselves that they hadn't heard any summons yet. They assumed that the young man who went into the office made a mistake and would be disqualified. Within a few minutes, however, the employer escorted the young man out of the office and said to the others, thank you all very much for coming in, but the job has now been filled. The other applicants re resumed grumbling and one spoke up saying, now wait just one minute. I don't understand. He was the last one to come in and we never even got a chance to be interviewed. That's just not fair. The employer said, well, I'm sorry, but the whole time you've been sitting here, the telegraph has been ticking out the following message in Morse code. If you understand this message, then come right in. The job is yours. Now, none of you heard it or understood it. This young man did, and the job is his. Now, let this story serve as a bit of a wake-up call this morning. All of our lives are filled to the brim with misplaced priorities, busyness, and clatter like that office in the story. As a result, we are often distracted and unprepared to listen and receive an incredible message from God himself, a message in our surroundings, in the scriptures, in, and in the birth, life, ministry, and death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The very first verse of our Bible reading for this morning says it all. Did you catch it? It, I, it was just there when I, when I just started the reading, but here it is again. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's how the Gospel of Mark begins. And it's kind of fat, and the whole Gospel's fast, so if you didn't... It, it, uh, if you're not paying attention, it'll get past you. But you see, this is the good news at the heart of Christmas, which we are still celebrating this morning. The celebration of that day, that, that one day 2,000 years ago, when Almighty God became flesh and blood, a tiny, helpless, newborn baby in the dusty little out-of-the-way village of Bethlehem just as it had been foretold. In the story of Jesus' birth, God reveals his true nature to us in a way that we can clearly comprehend. God became flesh and blood just like us, just like you. He lived among us and called upon familiar things from our own world that could be heard, seen, touched and tasted to bear witness to his otherwise unknowable, unseen, intangible qualities. And now, in Jesus, we can actually hear and see the glory of God in everything he says and does. In Jesus, God reached out to us, even in the midst of our sinfulness, into this broken world, into the darkness of our various hiding places, places that we even hide from ourselves. God chose to be born in our very flesh and blood to meet with us face to face, not to condemn us, not to condemn any one of us, but to love us. Throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus lived out this good news as he forgave sin healed the sick and raised the dead. And finally, as Jesus was lifted up above the earth on the cross, we were given the greatest revelation of God's glory. 
Someone said it like this, the cross reveals the scope of divine love, of divine glory, by revealing the depth of divine love. The cross reveals the scope of divine glory by revealing the depth of divine love. So you see, in Jesus, God has made known the truth about his great love for us. But are you listening? Did you catch that good news? Can you hear it? God himself is speaking directly to you again today in our surroundings here. In the Bible reading, in the birth, ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, he's sending you this clear message. God's love is greater than your brokenness. And God's love is greater than your sins. God will stop at nothing to save you. The birth of Jesus shows how far God is willing to go to reach you, and his death shows that nothing in this world can ever stop him or come between you and God's love. Have you heard the expression, face the music? I'm told the origin of that phrase occurred many years ago when a man wanted to join the Imperial Orchestra, but unfortunately couldn't play a single note. Since he was a person of great wealth and influence, however, he demanded to be allowed to join the, the orchestra so he could perform in front of the king. The conductor agreed to let him sit in the second row of the orchestra. Even though he couldn't even read music, he was given a flute, and when a concert would begin, he would raise his instrument, pucker his lips, and move his fingers. He went through all the motions of playing, but he never actually made a sound. This deception went on for two years. Then one day, a new conductor took over the Imperial Orchestra. He told the orchestra he wanted to personally audition all the players to see how well they could play. The audition would weed out those who weren't able to meet his standards, and he'd dismiss them from the orchestra. One by one. The players performed in his presence. Frantic with worry when it was his turn, the pho phony flautist pretended to be sick. The doctor who ordered, was ordered to examine him de declared that he was perfectly well. So the conductor insisted the man appear and demonstrate his skill. Completely devastated, filled with shame, the man had to confess he was a fake. That was the day he had to face the music. We gather here for worship on the morning of New Year's Eve, 2023. Just over 12 hours from the start of a brand new year, full of hope and possibility. We're given an opportunity in that case to pause just long enough to face the music, to face the truth about ourselves our misplaced priorities, our distracted busyness, our habit of simply going through the motions of our faith and not really listening and letting it be absorbed into our ears and our heart and soul. We have an opportunity to admit our failures, to face our shame, even the shame we're most afraid to, to look at to confess our sin, and to be reminded once again on account of Jesus Christ, you are completely forgiven and free. You see why it's good to face the music? Because I, I get to tell you that good news again today. On account of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and free. December 31st is a day for repentance and resolutions. Repentance of sins and resolutions to live differently in the year to come. Today also happens to be the first Sunday in the season of Christmas. It's still Christmas, so we are simultaneously pondering and celebrating the good news that in Jesus, God reached out to us in our sinfulness. That's why he came into the darkness of our various hiding places. God chose to be born. 
into our very own flesh and blood to meet with us face to face, not to condemn us, but to love us. Today's Bible reading couldn't be more clear about this. The message from God for you, again, the first verse says it all. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It says it all. And then the rest of the gospel goes out, goes on to lay that out and explain that for us. And so right away in the following verses for today, John the Baptist was bold to speak of the promised Messiah, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. We, we may not always be so confident in sharing this good news, but on this first Sunday of Christmas, we're reminded that God loves us enough to come to us in Jesus Christ. That's good news worth sharing. Our God, our God became flesh and blood and lived among us. He has revealed his glory to us and calls each of us to spread the good news. A vision of God's grace not only saves, it also transforms. There's something about having one's eyes or maybe ears ears and eyes opened by Jesus that gives you a whole new vision and direction. Not unlike the end of one year and the beginning of another. And so with that in mind, listen again to what I am about to tell you. Hear and trust this good news of God. Jesus Christ made the ultimate sacrifice for you. For each and every one of you. He sacrificed his life on the cross for the forgiveness of all your sins. You are forgiven and free. Jesus Christ has saved you from the power of sin and death once and for all. Nothing can change that. By the mercy and grace of God, you are free to live for him from now until the end of your life. To love and serve your neighbors in his name and in his stead. You are the body of Christ in the world today. So go in peace to grow in faith and carry on the work of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. And as the messengers come forward, we invite you now to respond to that good news by... Uh, sharing yourselves, your time, and your possessions with God and the work of his kingdom.
invite you to join me in thanking God for our offering today as it's brought forward. Let's pray. Good and loving God, we rejoice in the birth of Jesus, who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. As you have blessed us with your gifts, let them be a blessing for others through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. As we step into this new year now, I invite you to join me as we seek God in prayer. And after each petition, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious God, we pause on the doorstep of this new year and we are grateful. Grateful for all the celebration of Christmas. Grateful for all the light that has been added to the world. Grateful to God for those that we shared the holiday with. Whether it was our family who traveled far to be with us to give us the gift of that time, or whether it was with our chosen family. Lord, whichever way we celebrated, we know that you are with us and that you are for us and that you have forgiven us, and for that we give you thanks. Help us to see your presence among us. Let us hear your voice calling us to do justice and peace as you lead us into this new year. Lord, in your mercy. Prince of Peace, your own family fled their country after threats of violence. Be with all refugees and victims of oppression and those who live in places of war and conflict, whether abroad or right here in our own neighborhoods and communities. Bring those who suffer abuse and neglect into their homes of safety and comfort, Lord, in your mercy. Light of the world, you offer healing and wholeness to all of your people. So shine on any who endure illness or injury of any kind that they might know your comfort now and always, for Shelley, Bob, Daryl, and Sandra, for Sam, Aaron, Barb, and Florence, for Dirk and Jody, and for the names that we lift aloud in the quiet of our hearts now. Surround all who grieve their loved ones, that they might trust in your promises of life, including Donna and John. Obed and Aaron, Stephen and Kyle, Lord in your mercy. Hope of the nations, we bring, you bring all your people to follow and serve you, and so bless those that serve your church and the gospel in wherever places that might happen, including our partners in Nianzwa, Tanzania, and Guatemala City, Guatemala, and Maya Itza, Lord in your mercy. Son of Mary, through you all families are truly blessed. So hold families of all kinds in your love today. Strengthen those bonds as you guide us into this new year, trusting you. And when we do not know what to pray, you taught us to pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us as we fall not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Join us as we sing.
At this time, we want to invite Abby Doran forward, who we are going to bless and commission today as she heads out again. Hi. <laughs> nice to see you. Yeah. You need to turn it on. Just push it up. Perfect. There's an on button. There's an on button. Yay. Yay. You know, sometimes when you play sports or things like that, you kind of have two seasons in one season, right? Yeah. You know, and so this is the second part of your big season, right? Yes, definitely. <laughs> so for those that maybe didn't remember that, we actually commissioned Abby to serve with Young Adults in Global Mission, which is a powerful mission of our national church, where they send young adults to serve across the world. It's an incredible thing. Abby had the privilege to serve in Palestine and the West Bank for a season, and now she came back here, and now she's departing to go to Hungary, of all places in Europe. So away you go again. But we're so proud of you, Abby, and we're grateful for your resilience and for what God is speaking into your life and what you will be able to speak into our lives because of your experience. So thank you for serving. Thank you. Thank you for going. A few words of promise here that I wanted to share with you. A reading from 1 Peter. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift you have received. You have quite a few gifts, Abby. So in response to that in good news, I just would invite you to reply, I will and I ask God to help me. Abby, will you accept this commission to carry it out in accordance with the Holy Scriptures? I will and I ask God to help me. In all things, will you conduct yourself as an ambassador and servant of Jesus Christ? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you be faithful in your understanding and loving to the people among whom you will live and work? I will, and I ask God to help me. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. Amen. Easter people, we need your voice into this as well. Will you support Abby, sent by God to serve God's people with the gospel of hope and salvation in Hungary? Will you pray for her, help her, work for her, come alongside her, support her, check in on her and her family, who are sitting here today, and support them? If all those things sound good to you today, will you please say, we will? We will. So let us pray. And if you'd like to, you can extend a hand of blessing towards Abby at this time, and so she can feel and receive God's love and grace in this time. Gracious and loving God, you've called Abby to serve, and she has proven resilient in this work. We ask you, Lord, to speak into her life, to guide her, and for the partners that will receive her, Lord, bless them. Bless the work of her hands in the daily time that she has. Bless her rest, and we ask, Lord, that you'd bring her back to us safe, with, and us, Lord, to have open hearts to receive her story and to learn more about what you are doing in the world. We thank you for Abby. Bless her now in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, amen. Amen. Let's give Abby a hand. It's fun being church, isn't it? This is good stuff. Yeah. I invite you to stand as you're able to receive the blessing. Some of you still have family with you here who might be getting ready to travel on to the next thing. Please bless you and safe travels as you head back to your next adventure too in this January season. But the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.